Arnold Schwarzenegger butt. Wait, what? Arnold Schwarzenegger butt. Sing it. <laughs> Don't call my name. Oh, shit. <laughs> Too long, JoJo. God damn it. Busted. <laughs> Seems like somebody forgot how things work around here. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Caging Greatness, the show where we do whatever the fuck we want to. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no international laws can bind this show. That's right. Uh, we are here for a very special, uncaged episode. It's my birthday. Yay! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yeah. And from a birthday, I wanted to share one of my favorite 80s action movies with you guys, my pals. Oh. Pals. Friends we, even? We watched Arnold Schwarzenegger's Commando. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, all yeah. its bare man breasts and <laughs> all of the above. And, and yet, no, and kidnapping. And a lot, just a lot. This movie's a lot. <laughs> this movie did the uh, most of anything I could. I'd seen in a while. Yeah, this movie just decided to say, you know what, physics, fuck you. Yet somehow still slightly tamer than uh, Uncut Gems. <laughs> you know what? I was more comfortable. <laughs> there was only like one set of tits in this movie, so and they were like brief. And they were busy. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> they were. We'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> this, this movie said pegging rights. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get to that later. Never mind, everyone. <laughs> and directly to the front, pegging. <laughs> I mean, listen. If you can't handle pegging, you don't deserve to listen to this show. Yeah. Well, I mean, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Gannon. <laughs> it's 2022. Get with the pegging. It's 2022, and I still hate corn. Yeah, kid. It's not your fault, but I, it, it's I, it wasn't corn. the best week for a non-corn fans. Uh, I know. It was, a, it was a great week for corn fans. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I am so lost. What's going on here? Well, Cannon doesn't like corn. Like the band or the food? The, the food. food. I, oh. I like the band. The oh, food okay. I love the food. Yeah. The band's okay. And then that kid who's uh, who's known for loving corn, he got a big uh, accolade on the internet. Yeah. That's right. He's the yeah. Am- he he's an ambassador of corn. Yeah, he's the ambassador of corn. God, I didn't know I wanted something so badly <laughs> <laughs> until you until I saw someone else get it. I was like, mm. just like you know, a little kid. <laughs> I'm going to eat all this corn and I'll be the ambassador. That's right. Can't I'm just, coming for your crown. Can you just turn him into corn, eat him, and then take the power? I mean, I don't know how it works. Like I said, I, I'm unfamiliar with the laws of corn and the ascension uh, to the ambassadorship of corn. Like, we know how the, the Queen of England works. Like, we get that. Like, no, she doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Lizzie's in a box. She Liz. did. <laughs> I saw that video and I died. <laughs> she died too. I. So, we are here. And if you can't tell, it's a mix of what used to be and what is. We got a giant crew here. That is right. at least five people. That's right. We got essentially your regular host. You got me. It's my birthday. You got Cannon. Hello there. You got Jeremy. Hello, everybody. And we also got Pat. Hey, it's Pat. And JoJo back. I just got one question. What? Where on Eileen am I supposed to come? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The irony is I know how much you hate that song. That song uh, sucks balls. And I have the answer to your question. Troll Styles, Mystery <laughs> Diners. Troll Styles, Mystery Diners. Troll Styles, Mystery Diners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. Hey, you're, we're, we're bringing back all the best bits for this episode. <laughs> so, Wasn't there a day that happened a couple of days ago? <coughs> Uh, what? Wasn't what happened Sunday? Uh, football was on TV. Football was on TV. Yeah, yeah. professional football. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Football Sunday. Yeah. yeah, NFL Sunday ticket. Yeah, nothing. Oh, nothing else happened. TV. Cannon, did you forget? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> God damn it! There goes my fantasy football league. <laughs> so we watched Commando, yes. <laughs> starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, and also Alyssa Milano and Dan Hyeda. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of names in this movie. Oh, yeah, lots of names. So we're going to do the thing that we, we used to do and sometimes do, still do, mostly always. We're going to go around in a circle. You're going to say what you thought of Commander. You're going to give your star rating. And we're going to start with JoJo. 
Oh no, why did you have to start with me? Because I don't know how I feel about this. Because movie. you're on my right and we go <laughs> counterclockwise in this household when I'm here. All right, cool. Uh, and except when we don't. Bizarro world. This, this movie is uh, Nuck and Futz. It is wild. <laughs> um, like, I've heard legends of this movie, and people, like, oh, they'll be like, oh, it's not one of Schwarzenegger's best, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. There, there's just a lot. I'm mean, still kind of processing it. <laughs> sure. Because the movie, there's a lot of this movie that is really fun. Uh, there's also an extended bit where the mo- where Arnold Schwarzenegger just kidnaps a poor stewardess and just holds her hostage for like the rest of the movie. No, she was cool with it about halfway through. Well, yeah. was that point <laughs> stop on syndrome just kicked in in full? I, I, I guess. And, and, and the movie expects you to be like, oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know what to give it because it's like... <laughs> It's a blast to watch. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and a, like, I will say, like, the last, like, 30 minutes of this movie is literally just machine gun noises. <laughs> <laughs> There's also explosions. Uh, it's carnage. Yeah. And knives. And, and the score is chaotic, like, weirdly chaotic. We'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting somewhere between, like... Probably like a three, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere between a three. Somewhere between a three, yeah. Okay. It's like a menage a trois. Yeah. Like a Last point, Friday. It's a half star and three star. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Cannon. Well. What did you think? I've seen this movie one other time, and it was many, many moons ago. Confirmed, because I didn't remember hardly anything that happened in this movie, except for, you know, kidnappings. Times two. Um, At least two kidnappings. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, without mirroring a lot of what JoJo said, I have to agree it is big, dumb fun. It, there's, like, no seriousness to be had <coughs> at all. And the one-liners... Uh, and again, we'll talk about it. That music was ass. But <laughs> I am sitting at a three for Commando. Pat? Uh, this was my first time seeing Commando. I've heard I've heard the stories, and I was surprised like how much of this movie had just filtered through like pop culture osmosis, just up a river until <laughs> modern days. Like, oh, I recognize that line and that bit and this bit, and just from like all the various places it's been referenced over the years. And I guess over the last forty years, it. it it feels like a parody of 80s action movies when really it's more like the bedrock of 80s. It is just so over the top. And uh, it was, it's insane. Um, there's Calypso music while people are being just mowed to shreds. <laughs> and somehow it all works, kind of, I guess. Uh, I had a good time. Three stars. Jeremy? Uh, yeah, this was my first time seeing this, uh, which... It's strange because I love 80s action, explosion, massive, crazy movies, and this is definitely right up my alley, uh, such that it took this long to get around to watching it. Uh, I loved all of the random bits, including the fact that uh, apparently Schwarzenegger had a hit scan weapon minus everybody else's accurate weapons during the final sequence where they're just like hailing bullets at the man and no one's hitting him but he just sweeps the field and everybody just starts falling with like six bullets in him and, and no one knows how to aim everything's a hit yeah. shot yeah no he's just a, it's just like a, it's like playing like a first person shooter he's just you just gotta point the nozzle in one direction and it's gonna hit him but they don't get that abilities it, it's, it's like someone turned a third person shooter into dynasty warriors well, it's just uh, like wave after wave just being obliterated I would I would have to say I would give this movie four explosions out of five. Nice. Yeah. So if you've listened to any of the show before, you know my feelings on 80s action movies. They are what make me breathe. Like, I love them so. We had a Dolph Lundgren spectacular, we had a Van Damme spectacular. Uh, like, th- this is my shit. So this, this is a five-star movie for me. Always has been. I fucking love this movie. So, like, you don't need me to tell you it's awesome. I've already said it. It's awesome. Yeah, wait, so, can you say that one more time? <clears throat> well, it's pretty awesome. Okay. But what I am excited for, and this this is a big thing that I've been waiting for right now, uh, I want 
because you mentioned the music, the score of the film, right? It's a lot of, a lot of steel calypso drums, right? Uh, the, the, the <laughs> that, that, that's just like one aspect of it. I just, I, I, and Jojo, I'm excited that you're here for this because I want to tell you about the composer James Horner. Because uh, that name sounds familiar. Oh, it should. Oh, it should. Uh, he is a two-time Academy Award-winning composer, and I just want to read some of these because I didn't even know all of them myself. And there's going to be several things that apply to everybody. First big one, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. Okay. He also did the uh, score for Krull. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Love that movie. Star Trek Three, Cocoon. All of that was before Commando. And then uh, Aliens. Nice. An American Tale. Oh, Ooh. batteries not included. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Willow, nice. The land before time. Honey, I shrunk the kids. We're, we're getting this is just some. These are the big ones. The Rocketeer. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay. American Tale Five of Goes West. Oh, <coughs> classic. <clears throat> uh, Hocus Pocus. <laughs> okay. The Pelican Brief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, is that that movie with uh, Julia Roberts? In Mel Gibson, no, that was conspiracy. Uh, Denzel, maybe I think it's Denzel. Yeah, Denzel, God, that, that's a blast. The, the Page past. Master, oh, God, <laughs> Legends Jesus of the Christ. Fall, Braveheart, <laughs> Apollo 13, Jumanji, <laughs> Balto, Titanic, <laughs> Deep Impact, The Mask of Zorro, oh. Bicentennial Man. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The Jim Carrey one, I'd take it. Yeah. Okay. A Beautiful Mind. <laughs> Radio. Troy. <laughs> the Legend of Zorro. Uh, the Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Uh, oh, oh, there's a downer in that one. Avatar. <laughs> Yeah, the, the James Cameron one. Let's say. Oh, I mean, he worked on Aliens. Yeah, yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man. And the Magnificent Seven, and then he died. Oh. So what I'm hearing is it was a learning experience. (laughs) Because what the fuck happened in the middle of your career, bruv? Oh, sorry, you're dead. Never mind. (laughs) Because, like, straight up, like, the music... The, the the big thing that's out of place is, is, like, the steel drums. But it also blends, like... 80s, like, super programmed drums, you know, the big synths, the big guitars, and it's all strung together like a Frank Zappa, (laughs) Captain Beefheart, cacophonous wall of noise mixed with machine gun fire. It's like revolution number nine on steroids. Hey, I think think every person who's lived through this area... Has like entitled to their just their cocaine era <laughs> because like I, I unless he just he was just having a hyper fixation on just like calypso music during this time or he was <laughs> strung out when making this shit. Cause, and I mean it's not just like little bits here and there. I mean this dude's playing straight up like licks, <laughs> <laughs> just like. And, and like, and on top, of, and on top of all of this is like a careless whisper ass saxophone too. <laughs> no, that's like soaked in reverb. And I'm like, wh- why? How? It kind of works, but it's also just <laughs> annoying. Man, could you, I was literally about to say none of it worked. <laughs> could you imagine being in that mall and that's just the music that's playing over the speakers? Because honestly, it sounds like you're in a mall where like. Three different songs are playing at once. <laughs> you're like All at full volume. You're like in the Foot Locker, like and, and, and like different keys, different tempos. It's yeah. <laughs> it's experimental free form. Who knows? Don't, don't let the man tell he you came how to back, play music. That man <laughs> came back from a trip to the Caribbean and was like, you know what? I fucking love steel drums. I'm putting them everywhere. <laughs> Look. Schwarzenegger is fighting a tropical dictator, okay, In, uh, with with honestly, tropical troops. Honestly, at this point, I just feel like Arnold is the invading army, <laughs> one man army, and the and the brave soldiers of Havana are fighting for God and country, <laughs> or whatever fictional 
country they're supposed. I had no idea where they were supposed to be geographically. They're just like in. They're, a, they're in California. In yeah. city, and yeah. then in a Spanish speaking country, and then. Uh, yeah, they were they were in California, and then the little island at the end with the mansion is like off the coast of California. And the I remember reading somewhere it was like you couldn't use they couldn't use certain things like when they named off all the the operations he had done. They they specifically were like South America, and it's like this is the eighties, so you know drug war going on. We we can't uh, say anybody else, but we can't say Russia because Cold War is still technically happening. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, because. Yeah, <laughs> and terrorist, and just random terrorists. It's like a throw out. Arnold Schwarzenegger was in wars. <laughs> what do you mean the CIA toppled regimes? Yeah, let's just to suit American interest. So here's the plot. Plot <laughs> such as it is. Uh, Schwarzenegger is a retired military person who is really awesome, and the rest of his unit starts getting picked off, and so his former commander shows up. It's like. Bruh, all your boys are dying. Be careful. And then he's attacked. And the people trying to kill him, one of them is his old buddy from the unit that he had to kick out for being too crazy violent. And they kidnap his daughter, Alyssa Milano. And so he kidnaps a waitress or a stewardess, I think. Yeah. Kidnaps a stewardess. Yes. uh, Takes her car, then takes other cars. And with the stewardess's help... Wages a one-man war on a small island off the coast of California to get his daughter back. Also, you're forgetting one small but pretty significant detail. Not only does he steal her car, mm-hmm. he just straight up rips the seat out. <laughs> like, the passenger seat out. out. And, and you think it's like, oh, it's so he can lay down and hide from the guy they're trying to fall. No, he's just sitting up like a normal dude. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was he's only slightly <laughs> lower in this than he, what he would have been. And then after they find the guy they're chasing and they wreck the stewardess's car... Uh, they need another car, so he just flips over the other dude's car. Just so can like, we just like just tips it over straight out of big uh, showdown in little Tokyo? Dolph Lundgren flipping a car like it just keeps happening. So just list uh, his yeah, it's directed by the same guy. Arnold's uh, feats of strength in this movie include ripping a car seat out, flipping a Porsche over, uh, yanking off pieces of wall, flinging what appeared to be six to eight small security guards away from him like he's Sauron. Uh, um, picking up a, a telephone. Yep. Dude. Flinging a pipe through a man <laughs> who, who was wearing chain mail for some reason. Like a uh, chain mail vest over a sleeveless <laughs> shirt. That shit was, yeah, was not made out of chain. That is that the same director as Showdown Little Tokyo. There's That's no fun. Way. Um, I, I didn't know that. Honestly, I thought it was a mesh tank top over like a. I think that's what it was. I mean, it, it looked. Yeah. It looked kind of had like had like the bulletproof uh, like vest straps, but like something in the middle. That guy was from was from Mad Max. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was from the the second Mad Max movie. Who was he in Mad Max? I I don't remember exactly, but I just know like when I was reading some of the notes today, I saw that like they liked him so much. So, like that guy, we need that guy to be our crazy. Ex partner, bad guy. <laughs> they, they were partners, all right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what are Feats of Strength shirt was made out of? Fucking discount Dan Severn looked like shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, we we saw him. He he was the OG chopping wood guy. Like fuck Captain America. He's just out there like the, the first shot of the movie is just like kaboom, just like <laughs> like a, a bite the size of a bowling ball, and he's just carrying a goddamn tree <laughs> on his shoulder, just like how you do. Yeah. So like this, Commando was right in the middle of Schwarzenegger taking over movies because '82 was Conan the Barbarian, which is again one of my favorite films. '84 was Conan the Destroyer, which fuck you, also one of my favorite films. <laughs> '85 was Red Sonia. I can't defend that one. And then also '85 Commando. After this was Raw Deal, which is vastly underrated. Then he did Predator. And then he did Running Man, where he's uh, on the run to do a thing and also kidnaps a stewardess who gets I'm, caught I'm up in his I'm noticing the pattern. Where Terminator fall in all this? Terminator, uh, the original Terminator was 84. Okay. It was That's between was Conan and Red Sonja. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, he was definitely, this was the beginning of the meteoric, like, yeah. just rise of this man. 87 was Running Man. That's the year I was oh, born. Same. Uh, Total Recall was 90. Kindergarten Cop was 1990. <laughs> Terminator 2 is 91. So, you know, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. So much good stuff. 
blowing shit up uh, all day. All I can think of is Every like day. you're you're naming off all the movies, and I was thinking about all the James Cameron connections in this movie, and it's like because with the uh, you name like Aliens and the and then like you've got like True Lies is like mm-hmm. la- later, and that's like a Cameron film. Yeah, that freaking Bill Paxton was in this movie for it like a hot second. Yeah, yeah, and he was Aliens. And Predator. Yeah. Predator. Bill Duke was in the movie. He was yeah. in Predator later. Yeah, no, that, that was their. They were just meeting up in this movie. He didn't yeah. really kill him. <laughs> yeah. He like quietly told him later <laughs> that he's gonna need him to go go to the go to South America to take out some drug cartel and maybe fight an alien. <laughs> maybe. So I'm gonna systematically take out all the people in your crew. Yeah, but we need the best. <laughs> yeah, to kill the presidente. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those deaths at the beginning were hilarious. Like, oh shit! It's every like- death, every fucking like, everybody was having a seizure while they were getting pelted. Okay, yeah. and the one-liners, and the one-liners. He kills yeah. the guy on the plane. Says, "Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired." Uh, that, that was good. Like, I love this movie. Uh, the guy who you played Bennett, uh, his name is Vernon Wells. He was also in MacGyver. Random. The original MacGyver. Huh. Yeah. Cool bean. Yeah. Like, there was a. There was another MacGyver? Oh, yeah. They did a reboot recently. Yeah. Oh, how recent? Uh, Pretty very recent. recently. Like oh, like the TV? Like the new TV show MacGyver? Yeah. The yeah. 20, it was 2016. Jesus. It oh. was... Uh, I missed that one. It was five seasons. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. And, and, and plus they're about to reboot Quantum Leap. What? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they are rebooting Quantum Leap. Well, it's not... I, it seems like they're trying to make it like reboot slash soft sequel. Because it's the the character's name is different, so there's a chance we'll get a little Bacula action. They best. I'll riot. <laughs> I love Quantum Leap. It, it, they'll, just ha- they'll just have this, this new fella like just jump in like Scott back. He just he's still jumping, but then like there's a new I forget his name. Uh, he's a new Asian a- action actor. He's in this new one. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about like movie connection stuff like that. There's one on here that's specific for you uh, and canon as well yeah. uh, one of the writers is uh, his name was like Stephen E. De Souza he was uh, one of the writers for this movie he was also the director of uh, a little movie known as Street Fighter yeah he was one of the head writers for this movie yeah uh, okay cool as well as a one Jeff Loeb was a comic book writer mm-hmm. uh, that's why they use the general's name as General Frank Kirby yeah so, Jack Kirby yeah yeah also do we we haven't said Arnold's name for his character made John Alexander Matrix. That's right. <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> God, like this movie, like Pat said, this movie's like a parody of action movies, but it is also the template for action movies. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, like I'm watching this, and I'm like, Kojima loves this. Like, this, oh, yeah. is, this is straight up Metal Gear. Because it has like, a, there is so much homoerotic attention in this movie, <laughs> which Kojima eats up with a spoon. And there's also explosions and like intrigue. And I just, it's like, wow, it's literally everything you could like imagine to be in an 80s action movie. <laughs> and it's just the sheer superhuman feats that Arnold Schwarzenegger manages to pull off. It's like I, I'm surprised he, he, you just didn't type in God mode and just oh yeah plow through this movie just chest first. That's a, he was basically the Kool Aid man for ninety nine percent of the movie. The guys from ID Software watched this movie and was like, "That's Doom guy." Basically, but I, I thought that whenever he was doing the when he got on the island and he placed the claymores and the alarm goes off, all I could hear in my head was dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> it's like <And> snake. <laughs> Three claymores <laughs> obliterate <laughs> like this entire no. third of a like estate. Just What's like it's sixteen miles into the air, just fire towers. <laughs> Everybody is just atomized. Thanos snapped like <laughs> di- the meteor that killed the dinosaurs would blush at this <laughs> bullshit. What you didn't know is there was a gas leak in one of those buildings. Ah, damn. Yep, totally. <laughs> yeah, that, they were they were in the process of repairing it. Like they had evacuated some of the guys. It, I mean, it makes sense because the the bowels of this Havana mansion is like a Dickensian coal factory and it just just keeps going deeper and it's just more labyrinthine and steamy and just like how much just coal 
fossil fuels it take to run this goddamn house. <laughs> Fun fact, same mansion from Beverly Hills Cop. I believe. And Axel was trying to save someone named Jenny. Ah, that's fun. See, that's why I exploded. Jenny was the one. She was running around the house yeah, pulling all the she, gas lines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. We yeah. saw what she did when she was trapped in that room. She took the door handle off. Yeah, yeah. used it to pry open a board, holding her in. She could have done that, like, much earlier in the film. Yeah, because she was there for, like, a good seven Twelve hours. hours. No, it was 11 hours, oh. but they, she yeah. didn't get there. Yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> so, still, like, it, it's a minimum five to seven it hours. It took three yeah. for her to get the handle off. Yeah. <laughs> I still just think that every time I kept seeing him look at his watch, I would think of 24 and just like, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> that was the one thing I remembered for some reason in this movie. Like, I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm going to see a clock a lot. And by God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his watch was seen more than fucking him in this movie. <laughs> that's not true. That's the, uh, that's the unofficial sequel. It's just his watch taking on guys. Uh. <laughs> it's some. It, it's the watch with yeah. Ben Stiller and oh, okay. those other dudes. No, no. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> you know, the, it's got Richie Iowata in it. Yeah, the other dude. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it? What so? Um, Gliglax, my favorite. <laughs> I mean, everybody loves Gliglax. I don't know, man. That motherfucker owes me for twelve bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody loves Gliglax. <laughs> See, I love Commando. I could tell. It's a I, fun time. It's just it's big, dumb, stupid fun. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the same reason I love Street Fighter and like all of Van Damme's filmography and the vast majority of Dolph Lundgren's filmography. That's why I tell people I like to watch The Transporters. Like, it's just dumb fun. Yeah, I enjoy those. Yeah. Just, just let me turn my brain off for like a good hour and a half and... I'll be fine. I'll <laughs> laugh at something. I'll think of something that's absurd, but at the end of the night, I'm just going to be like, that was fun. It's like, huh, Schwarzenegger just suplexed a dude while the dude was in a foam booth. It was awesome. He did do that. Just straight fireman's carried that some bitch. Just. <laughs> and how, how like, there's like 27 security guards probably just, <laughs> uh, just like mm-hmm. throws them all. They go flying. Like there's so many shots of this movie of, of just Schwarzenegger running into frame with a bunch of dudes standing still and then they fall over. So he's <laughs> just, uh, he's a human can a uh, uh, human bowling ball. Yeah, yes. just, you actually hear a pin strike just lost in all the uh, steel drum music. Because when they finally got to the uh, the the, uh, the mansion. Uh, when they when he came up upon this straightaway, and I shit you not, there's like five dudes who have him dead to fucking rights, and he just comes around the <laughs> corner, just da, 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 da. it's 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 great. And I would love how he would throw a grenade or someone get shot, and then they'll just do like some certain do, do so lay like flips and turn in the air before they finally hit the ground. What you don't own acrobatic grenades? <sighs> It, just, it's, it, it, it hits you that hard. Yeah. And another great bit is when he's like, has to take shelter for just a brief moment in this tiny dollhouse of a garden shack. And then 15 dudes just unload for like a good solid minute into this house. Doesn't even ruffle his britches. And he comes out <laughs> just slinging saw blades, cutting arms off, and it just. Just by sheer fancy, <laughs> but Pat, he was in he was in the ceiling. He did yeah. the ceiling. Yeah. They didn't shoot the ceiling. <laughs> like he flung that saw blade and scalped that man. He did. He did. He did. It was awesome. <laughs> he clearly was a fan of Leon the Professional. He knows that you got to do those like crunches so you can sit up in the roof and like surprise people. Uh, given the release dates, I think Leon was a fan of Schwarzenegger. All right, I forget. We have determined that Commando is like the progenitor of like everything. John Matrix <laughs> is a time traveler. That's right. Like, John entered the Matrix. What was it? Can- Cannon pointed out that he was just dressed like Dra- uh, Drake from Uncharted. Yeah, like that weird, like three, four button. It's not a sweater. It's a long sleeve yeah. shirt and like khaki colored fucking jeans and boots. And I'm like, that's fucking Nathan Drake's yeah. whole attire. Move over, Tom Holland. Jeremy, I believe that given the timeline, uh, Nathan Drake was dressed like Schwarzenegger. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Damn you. Don't make me make a time machine. And he also was like swinging around in the mall with the inflatable thing. Yeah. <laughs> Grabbed a balloon, went full fucking Tarzan. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's just weird fantasy 80s mall where there's like a... Uh, a darkened restaurant that just, uh, just, uh, just had smoke pumping out of the air <laughs> vents. And it is thick in there. And he's trying to get shady and money. And then there's all these like these weird tube balloons. And it's like, 
I don't think the eighties were real. <laughs> Even in the eighties, I don't think these places were real. Wait, Stranger Things isn't a documentary? Uh, no. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Even though um, Alyssa, Alyssa Milano does look like uh, Eleven in this movie, That's not, and I that's couldn't tell if she was actually a child or just a tiny woman dressed like a small child. I'm a double check. <laughs> well, there, was, there was there was one moment where you know when she was locked up in the room and you know she's crying, she's scared, she's probably sweating, but like. It's like, you know, she's like a young girl and she appears to have been like crying heavy like mascara. Like, and I'm just like, what is all those like, oh, oh eyeliner, excuse me. It's just like black droplets coming down her face. And I was just like, young lady. <laughs> I, it could be that's meant to be like, because, you know, wrecks and kidnappings and gunfire and shit. Who they, knows? they landed oh. and they just shoved a fucking mud <laughs> pie in her face. Uh, Fuck you, kid. You're going to die later. Also, oh, during filming of this movie, Alyssa Milano was 12. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it, it, back in the day, everybody looked old. I just had that realization <laughs> of the scene from the beginning of the movie where he pushed the truck down the hill. Yeah. 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 They pulled the wires out of the truck and he was like, Fuck it. I'll <laughs> <I'm> just. <laughs> Brutes, me and gravity, we gonna do this job. My, gravity's my co-pilot. Don't, 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 just like, just like almost turning end over end as he's like barreling down this hill, and then he misses them and just like, ha ha, he's actually going further, so he can just still not hit him. <laughs> that like, image in my head of instead of uh, Jesus take the will, it's Newton take the will. <laughs> I like to think that that scene inspired uh, the scene from Black Sheep where Chris Farley just eats shit down the hill. And Hot Rod. That truck going down the hill and absolutely being in 17 different directions reminds me, I saw today, I was driving to the bank uh, before I headed to the shop. There was a car in front of me and I shit you not, it was driving at an angle. So, like, the front wheel was a good foot and a half to the left of the back wheel, but it was still going straight. So, the whole car was driving cockeyed like a backslash. Oh. So, it was moving like how Piper walked. <coughs> yes. Yes. So severe alignment problem. Oh, it's so, like, I don't, I don't think that's a frame problem. Like, it legitimately, it was just like a backslash moving forward, right? <laughs> no, see, so, no, what, what you don't realize was he was just Mario Kart drifting IRL. Yeah. He was trying to snake. It's, a, it's an advanced technique. Yeah, see, see, if you follow someone while you're drifting long enough in Mario Kart, you get a speed boost. You got to wait till those sparks turn blue. So I Purple. Just, I just backed way off and got in a different lane because, you know, it's scary. Yeah, yeah, because he, that could have turned into an action movie at any moment. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish uh, uh, the actor David Patrick Kelly, who played Sully in this movie, was in it a little bit longer. Because at least in my opinion, out of all the bad guys in this movie, I felt like he gave at least one of the best performances. of. The- <laughs> oh, yeah. He was suitably sleazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's great in Twin Peaks. He, he plays a very similar that, uh, He would be in Twin Peaks. Those, those, pants were, <laughs> those pants were so hyped. Yeah. It was the 80s. And that tie was something. <laughs> yeah. That tie, the pants were high and the tie was low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the waistband comes up to your armpits and your tie goes to your crotch. See, you pull the tie to raise your pants up. <laughs> 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 I, just, I like how he thought it was an open okay thing to get off the phone and immediately hit on the woman who was also on the phone with her talking, boyfriend. Yeah, talking to I guess now her ex-boyfriend seeing as she's probably moving in with <laughs> Schwarzenegger because she's going to be on the run from the cops. It's like, because yeah. Artis Wolfner I would say commits like a domestic terrorist levels of destruction and then she's just an accomplice and she, she had plenty of times just like, you know what, I'm going to cut my losses and, and leave. Uh, all the best. I mean, she's like, no, I'm ride or die for this giant Swede. Oh, I guess it's when she like decided to throw a cop down the stairs, she's like, well, fuck, I'm a criminal now. Might as well join the fun. <laughs> she shot a police vehicle with a rocket launcher. Yeah. It's like, this, this that is was how I break Arnold Schwarzenegger out of jail. I just shoot a missile. After he, you know, drove through the front of Supply City with a bulldozer. Oh, yeah. Well, while, while we're on the subject of that, um, he gets arrested, gets broken out, cops everywhere, right? Um, she is just able to willy-nilly get the car with all the fucking evidence in it <laughs> and bring it to another scene of another crime. <laughs> so I found this interesting stack because I was curious. Schwarzenegger, uh, in his films, as of 2015, <clears throat> has 312 career kills in his movies. Uh, number five is Racer, 29. These are his top five. Predator, 
Uh, well, I guess they no. It's in order of most kills. I was about to say no. <laughs> There's only one thing he kills. That's weird. They just fucked up the list. So Racer is 29. Predator he killed 25. True Lies is 51 kills. Nice. Total Recall 44 kills. And his number one is Commando with 81 on-screen kills. Yeah, because like the entire Spanish army is just annihilated by his goddamn machine gun. <laughs> Damn, IMDb's wrong, man. Hit scan weapons are OP. I know anybody can edit IMDb though cuz they they got it at 10 They got it at 109 total in the movie, 102 by Schwarzenegger. Huh. <laughs> Which again, I don't know. This is just some shit people are typing up, but <laughs> You can put any number out there. I believe 279, sure. Honestly, I still don't believe it. I think it's more like 3,000. <laughs> we, we don't know how many people were in those buildings. No, we up. don't. <laughs> Only his 12-year-old murderous daughter does. <laughs> she was just running, going, zip, 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 just stabbing motherfuckers. In the I, was for, I was waiting for her superhuman murder genes to just turn on, and then she just like punches through the wall, and then she just like, Starts ripping people's throats out with our teeth. It was a little yeah. early before she became a witch, so yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe they developed after. Yeah. Makes wasn't sense. she wasn't charmed, right? I'm yeah, not making that up. Okay. <laughs> a little while later. I mean, she, yeah, she lived with him, so you'd figure she would have picked up some skills. I mean, maybe it's like the X when it's, it's at 13 is when the powers turn on. Ah, yes. <laughs> Doesn't she do those only for a quarter a day? You can feed... Uh, a child in need commercials now. Doesn't she do that? Yes. Uh, probably. Yeah, no, she does. I thought I saw her face in one of those. Mm-hmm. Side profile, shoulders, looking like this for some reason. I know y'all can't see this at home, but I'm doing right. it for everybody here. Gorgeous. I will give Hello. you money. How much money I am you need? star of Commando, <laughs> Alyssa Milano. Do you know what else she is a star of? from crying in an empty room for seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> Shut she up and take my more. money. <laughs> did a lot more in Double Dragon, though. Oh, wait, was Lisa Milano in Double Dragon? She was in Double Dragon. Oh, sh- yes. she was the leader of the resistance with the short blonde hair, the daughter of the cop. Damn! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> God, that's a movie I haven't heard in a lot. Oh, Welcome yeah. to the Milano verse. I, uh, Damn. My, my mom real? had a friend who owned like a video store, and I rented that movie so many times. I watched it about six months ago because it was on Amazon. I was just curious. I was like, it's been about 15 years. I want to see how bad this is. It's bad. Yeah. All I it's remember so is the opening sequence where they talk about acid rain. And I was yeah. just like, this makes no sense into the game. I'm like, I, I, I remembered most of the movie. Robert Patrick is, he knows exactly what movie he's in. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's, it was dumb fun. But come but. on, Mark the Cascos. Yeah. Uh, I was sick with the chicken pox first time I saw that movie. <laughs> I, yeah. I remember we rented two two movies from my mom's friend's video store, and was, we got Double Dragon, and we got Carnosaurus, which was the one where they genetically created a dinosaur out of a chicken egg, and it has a hilarious end sequence where they kill a T-Rex with a bobcat. Like, the little, like, not a physical bobcat, but they like... They just the, throw a car- cat at <laughs> Yeah. Bitch. I remember watching that movie as a kid just being so confused. That is an interesting string of words you just said. Trust me, Carnosaurus, look it up. It's I'm, hilarious. I am investigating as, as we speak. Um, I had another one on my list here of fun connections because of it being Nick Cage, but uh, this movie has connections to Valley Girl. Yeah. Um, so the scene with uh, where Cookie helps himself to the free Cadillac and kills that guy. Yeah. Uh, it was filmed only one-fourth of a mile from Julia Richmond, the title character's parents' health food restaurant. Uh, the former Sherman Oaks Galleria, where he, where everything goes down with the security guards fights, that was a revamp mall that was also from Valley Girl. Hmm. And uh, when John Matrix and Cindy follow Sully and the car comes up towards the camera and makes a left, this is the same location that even the camera and the angle of the scene for the Fab Four leave a party in Valley Girl. Huh. So... So this well, movie's actually Valley Girl. Yeah, this, this movie's movie Valley Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Same universe. You'd, ex- you'd expect like, them to like cross. God, totally, we have to go get off the, to the mall. Totally, to either, the mall. Either it happened the same week, or maybe they were like, just like missed each other by like, you know, a couple of weeks. That's it. Yep, that's Carnosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, I remember that. It came out in 1993. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Spawn. Just, just read the, just read the description. That looks like a fucking inflatable T Rex on the movie poster. Oh, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> Carnosaur came out in 1993, directed by Adam Simon and Darren Maloney. Driven to extinction, back for revenge. 
After being driven to extinction, great bloodthirsty dinosaurs come back to life with the assistance of a demented genetic scientist. She plans to replace the human race with a super race of dinosaurs that will not pollute the planet. Yup. Yup. Hmm. I don't know what it is about my childhood and weird eco-terror movies, because there's that, and then there's prophecy with the freaking skinless bear. See, I always preferred The Prophecy with Christopher Walken. I would, too, except for the fact that I happened upon the Skinless Bear movie and was utterly terrified for, like, the next year and a half. Fair. <laughs> and then my friends didn't believe me until one night it was just on TV and I sprinted down the hall of my dorm to bust through my friends. Like, the Skinless Bear movie's on! Turn it on right now! <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, a part where there's, like, giant tadpoles and they pull, like, bark off of a tree and underneath it looks like gross skin I that movie was weird it clearly left an impression that and Event Horizon are like the two movies that scared the shit out of me as a kid yeah. oh and, and sometimes the they come back we're going. I don't know what it was about sometimes they come back that movie was also like fucking like messed me up that's fair but going back to when I was a just a scaredy bitch baby when I was a child did I ever tell you about my first movie theater experience I don't no. think so uh, it was, you mentioned it earlier, a uh, star of this movie's in it. It was Adam's Family, actually. Oh. The first time I remember being in a theater was for Adam's Family. And y'all all know the first character you're introduced to, right? In Adam's Family. Uh, it's Thing, right? Mm -hmm. The Hand. Oh, yeah, it's, he's running across the floor. I was not fucking ready for that <laughs> shit, okay? <laughs> Little fucking, how old was I then? I, I had to have been like four, five, uh, Yeah, like no, you should. You would have been about four. Yeah, that's that's like it had to be like 92. It's, it's like, not 91, I think. It's like just seeing something on screen unnatural <laughs> that you've never fucking seen before <laughs> as a very young person. They had to take me out of the theater. I mean, granted, I don't remember it, but they told me, that they had to pull me out because I was like just crying and screaming. They had to shut the theater down. That was wow. the beginning of the movie. And I'm sorry, mom and dad, but that was kind of on y'all. Well, I am a huge proprietor of not bringing your fucking dumpy headed kids to the theater, okay? Yeah. Unless they can be quiet, of course. And if they're infants, don't bring them at all. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Especially not to the very long, very loud movie. Yeah. The Batman. I'm still pissed about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that seems. Oh, man. Nope. God, that was a chaotic viewing experience. I, I, you know, there were so many just misbehaved people at the Batman opening night. I'm just like, I, this, this is what COVID does to people. They're just like, oh, we have we've been inside for a year and a half. All social skills, I forgot it. I was like, theaters still work the same even after COVID dipshit. So you know, let's uh, silence your cell phones, uh, shut the fuck up, and uh, don't bring your babies. And for the love of God, do not use that fucking flashing notification. I that that shit fucking pisses me Psycho off. Psycho shit. That that is just you want to watch the fucking world burn like, who's type that, of shit. Who, who's that for? Probably I know probably deaf people, but like no, I just use fuck? vibrate. <laughs> like completely deaf people, Pat. <laughs> Damn I'm, it! I'm the closest you're gonna get. Ableist, you're fucking. You're you're able. <laughs> <laughs> You've got half the capacity. There are people out there who don't know what a gunshot sounds like. They can't enjoy commando. They don't know what they're just looking at into the waves of air throwing into their head. Well, if you have anything mean you want to say about deaf people, Cannon, go ahead and do it. They're not listening. I don't have any. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And now we're going to start creating text versions of the podcast. Well, yeah, you just wait until some sorry sap that we hire has to transcript this bullshit. <laughs> I can just see them now. They're going to be like halfway through it and like time and like, I give up. I'm like, fuck this. Y'all aren't paying me enough. Where's the Braille transcription for um, our podcast? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Commando. It was fun. It was I can't listen to this podcast. I have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, all right, I want to talk about uh, the, um, the one-liners. Because, God, they were a plenty in this movie. They were a plenty, but they were not created equal. I'll tell you yeah. that much. <laughs> yeah, they were all amazing. <laughs> My personal favorite is when he's dangling fucking Sully over the mountain. Like, you remember when I told you I'd kill you last? Yeah, yeah, you said that. I lied. And just drops. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Susie gets back in the car. She's like, 
well, what happened to the guy? Like, I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> and you all immediately fucking thought of the Punisher with John Travolta. He's like, where's your mom? She took the train. He goes, where's where so-and-so? Oh, he's wrapped up in something. I was like, wow. Right in time. <laughs> uh, my, my favorite one-liner from that one, though, is, is the the isometric part where he's like, you killed my son. You're ah, both of them. 2004 Punisher is so fucking good. God. It is good. <laughs> Go back and listen to our episode where you watch the Punisher. <laughs> we did do that. <laughs> I, and both of our episodes where we watched the Punisher. Yes. We've watched All the two Punishers. of them. God damn it. We're going to have to do Warzone at some point, aren't we? No. I suppose. I mean, uh, uh, y'all know me. Oh, I love me oh. some steel books. Yeah. I'm mad at how fucking good the Punisher Warzone uh, Lionsgate Best Buy exclusive steelbook looks it for such a trash ass movie. It looks hey, that's really how to good. get people to buy it. You just have a slick cover. Hey, that that movie has a cult following for some reason. He punches a hole in a man's face. <laughs> like I know it's based off of a comic book. But John Berthold could never. J- yeah, he would at least hit him three times before the head came. And in. also, he's, he's a reasonable murderer. He's like a goddamn caveman the whole time. <gasps> oh, the Punisher, not John Berthold. John Berthold's not a murderer. No, he, that, that, he's a sweet man. He looks like an animal, but he is beautiful. <laughs> he has a podcast now. I need to listen to it. Oh, he has a podcast now. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He he's recently actually, had Shia LaBeouf on it. Yeah, he's so, in a bit of hot water over that one. Little apology tour, apparently, for uh, LaBeouf, I guess. Yeah. I, I guess this is it. It's well. like, hey, Army Henner took the heat off me. Why are y'all so mad? <laughs> Meanwhile. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. I was, about to, I was thinking of like, <laughs> I was like, look out behind you. It's Shia LaBeouf. Meanwhile, we're still getting a flash movie. Uh, he's, uh, they said, I'm sorry, and everything's nope. fucking forgiven. In fact, tomorrow there's a Flash tie-in comic releasing for the movie. Oh, no. You know what? I, w- I don't care how bad, girl, bad, bad Batgirl was. I would have taken Batgirl. I'm sorry. We still would have gotten Keaton. I don't... I'm sorry. I, I'm tired of... I, I, I'm tired of that. A lot of the current rumors are suggesting that we're not going to get very much Keaton at all. Like, after Flash, he's not coming back for anything else. Oh, I don't yeah, this, blame him. This new there. Warner Brothers... Uh, DC bullshit Discovery is fucking up all the works right now uh, they're yeah. burning it to the ground like it's bad well it's- I mean it wasn't like it was managed well in the first place either it just seems like since Discovery has bought Time Warner it's just kind of mm, it's almost like streaming has started the fucking downfall <laughs> cable with extra steps. What the fuck? Do you remember when, when streaming was fun? Do you remember when oh, this yeah. was simpler? I vaguely recall. I remember when I got Netflix because it was so cheap. And now it is not. No, and then not. they were like, hey, we're bumping it up to 15 bucks. And I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> you know what? Let, let me, let me, well, never mind. Uh, Commando streaming on Amazon, right? Uh, no, I rented it on Amazon. Oh, you rented it? Ha ha! It's on Hulu if you have the stars bundle. Ha ha! No one has stars anymore. <laughs> Man, I was about to say. I, I, I used th- to. I, think, I had, th- think the only reason I had stars was so I could watch Penny Dreadful. I had it for uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead and American Gods. And Ash vs. the Evil Dead ended and American Gods should have. Went to hell. Much sooner. That yeah. first season was so good. First season was so good. And then they shit the bed. You know what? The se- I didn't even hate the second season. Like It's not as good. It's all, It's fine. They shit the bed. I couldn't. I couldn't watch the third season. I got like three episodes in. Like I'm done. I, w- me and my friends got together and we watched. We wa- We were. We had like our watch parties. And about halfway through the second season, we were all just kind of like, I don't know about this. <laughs> Trying to find a new show to watch. That's, that's exactly what happened with The Walking Dead and my, my little friend group. We got through like the the third episode of the like the third season. And we we're just like, no, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you, that, that's a good place to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, th- that that show. My favorite uh, episode. I'm and, not getting on my Walking Dead. So that's much. a dead horse. Literally, we uh, we're not going to talk about. Well, there's this. more spinoffs happening for some reason. So there's that. Dear After Kurt, the original is dead, it's hey, SBU just, all over. You still got to get through season, the final season, part three of three. Wow, there's some real Last of Us first remake shit. It's like it was going to be a movie with fucking Rick. Now it's a show with Rick and Michonne. And another spinoff's happening, I think. With Daryl or something. Hi, here at AMC. Can we you, don't know what we're doing. Just, just cancel the mother... Just leave, just leave Daryl alone. He needs to do Boondock Saints 3. He doesn't need to do it, but I want it to happen. Also, so, AMC, make your app 
usable. It's dog shit. I was trying to watch that killer new show, Dark Wind. She got really fucking cool. Your app fucking sucks. Actually, I take that back. Have you all seen The Terror? No. It's a show on AMC, and it's like, um, it's basically kind of like a bunch of people stranded in the Atlantic in like the 1800s, and it's just horror in the Atlantic. And it's, I watched the, I saw a clip of it, and then I decided to watch part of the first episode and was like, oh, fuck, this is good. And I, was I, like, I think I've heard about that. I think there's one person on my Twitter that followed it. Yeah, it, it seems interesting. I'm uh, I'm going to give it a watch with, when October rolls around just so me and Allison have something to watch, like some scary stuff to watch. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right. so yeah. I do have one, uh, another little, t- well, one thing I want to talk about that I enjoy, and I don't think we see it enough in movies, at least in modern day. I think the last time I saw this bit that I can remember was in Hot Fuzz. Um, but the the nice little close up of people, you know, getting their gear together. Just mm-hmm. the montage of just quick zoom oh, yeah. into the bear, just chick, put the clip in, all that shit. You know what? Put that in more. Put that in more everything. Yeah. Uh, it, I, and, and it reminds me of Sam Raimi. And anything that reminds me of Sam Raimi makes me happy. Oh That's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the sequence of him putting all that, carrying all that shit. Yeah. I mean, he was like I said earlier. He was like push, pushing cars over. He was carrying a whole ass tree in the beginning of the movie. Like, like I think, think I said something like in, during the movie. I was like, thank God he's strong as an ox. Otherwise, that'd be a lot of shit he's wearing. <laughs> yeah, man. So he's got, much. like, two, like, assault rifles, like, just all these duffel bags, like a fucking rocket launcher. He's just strapped to the gills. But honestly, it just would have been funnier if he just was just rolled up on the, the Havana. It was just like a fucking his black thong on. It's like... <laughs> I got the biggest gun right fucking here, dude. Uh, there was one moment where the movie got quiet and he was running around with the fucking uh, grenades dangling and all you can hear was just like... <laughs> hear all the shit just like rattling. Clink, clink. Can't be sneaky when you're rattling. And also when he took... Now, if I remember the montage correctly, it was boots, then vest, right? Yes. Uh, I think so. Because like, I saw that you sent the gif. Early, yeah. And that was fucking sweet. I got pumped, ready to go. Uh-huh. Uh, he also saw him putting little lines all over his body. How did he get the lines on his chesticle region if he was already vested up? He, he, he can do that in this movie. Magic. I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't God be surprised. No. I would yeah. not be surprised. He, he, they're tattooed on. <laughs> he, he has magical fairies that put on that stuff for him. I mean, if he, I'd get tired of painting it's the left on over from the body paint from Conan the Barbarian. There you go. Yes, and then he just kept it on for Predator. After. <laughs> yeah, he got done with this movie and immediately went straight into Predator. Because like they were, walked off set <laughs> yeah. in the backyard at that mansion. I was just like, oh, how nice those those rich people let them use the backyard to shoot Predator immediately <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> you could convince me. It's, it, I think I think a, a lot of his movies they were just film. He just as soon as he filmed, he just walked on to the next one, or he just filmed like seven movies simultaneously. <laughs> they all blend together. He was very prolific in the 80s, yeah. yeah. Where's our multiverse of Schwarzenegger? <laughs> I do want to know, like, why uh, why um, uh, uh, Freddie Mercury was the big bad. Well, not the big bad, but I guess the biggest bad in this movie when uh, the president got killed, ex-president got killed. Well, it's because uh, that was, you know, his former squad mate, so it was personal. You know? Well, like, what was he, uh, do we know what he was in prior to this? Uh, that that was the guy that was in Mad Max. Yeah, the Bennett. Fuck, I haven't seen Mad Max yeah, in so it was long. Mad Max 2 and... Was he in all of them? <clears throat> no, no, he's, he's just the second, into, one. second oh, one. Okay. Well, there was but man, I swear to God, every time I saw it on screen, I just heard in my head, boom, 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 boom. He, he was the one that was in the original MacGyver, uh, in the movie that started MacGyver and also the show. And... He kind of reminded me of Kano. I can see that. <laughs> He's been in several Power Rangers uh, things. Okay. He, he had that bogan accent. <coughs> he was in <coughs> Looney Tunes back bogan. in action. Nice. <laughs> we gotta get me Q, Morty. We gotta get me Q, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing some old bits back. Okay. Man, Bush World Ventures. I don't know. Like He was the... like objectively worst dressed out of all of them. Oh, 100%. Yeah, he stood out like a sore thumb. Like, like man, come on. Like, <laughs> that was, if they were trying, to, if that was actually supposed to look like real chain mail, they failed. Because he was wearing a real fucking chain. The shit wasn't shiny. It looked like wool. I think it was just supposed to be a mesh top because it's the <laughs> 80s and that's what people wore. Did, yeah. did they? Yeah. Well, was the, the, I don't know. It, it looked like fucking Party City, I'll tell you that. It's, it's hard seeing shirts like that on people that aren't like muscled up 
beef donkeys because it's normally like spread out and it looks like a fishnet on their tatties. Yeah, yeah. because because like the dude looked like the forty year old guys who who's like, oh yeah, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. in this movie. I got I, three of them right there. Oh, <laughs> well, they had that fight scene, and he even says like, "You're getting old," and it's like, bro, you look older than him. Yes. That's a good, it, good margin. Yeah, like you have a beer belly, my man. <laughs> I mean, I, I do appreciate that, you know, in this era, you could be an, an action guy regardless of your shape. And, you know, you know what? Action accepts all body diversity here. Look at you, Bob Odenkirk, you beautiful bastard. The guy, uh, Vernon Wells, who played Bennett, is actually, uh, if I'm looking at this right, two years older than Schwarzenegger. That's funny. Damn. And drugs, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Australia, kids. It's, they got giant spiders and shit. Hey, that's where the, that's where eight legged freaks happen. I mean, they've got all the deadliest, the most venomous animals on the planet in one place. And you know what? Can they, every other country in the world just said fuck this and shipped them over there. <laughs> Real. Well, knives and blood and guns. And Boom! Boom. This has been fun. <laughs> Have you enjoyed your birthday, Shim? Your early birthday? <laughs> yeah, I've enjoyed it. It was a good episode. It was a good movie. It was a good time. Just to Hell let you know, yeah. we stuffed the uh, birthday cake full of claymores. Uh-huh. Ba-boom! Oh, no! <laughs> but when you, like, you take your first bite, Drew McIntyre kicks you in the face. Like, he's in the cake. <laughs> oh, no! His finishing move's called the claymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> where, where he just, like, does a drop kick. Oh, Pat, look right above you. <laughs> oh, shit. It's a bug attack for my birthday. Well, it, talking about old bits, there's a whole fucking roach on the ceiling. Oh, right yeah. Now. Holy wow. shit. It was right above Pat. Jesus Pat. Christ. <laughs> Pat, we knew him well. Don't <laughs> <Well, So, laughs> stand there wrap up the show. <laughs> Clearly what, the bug's not. What if something really interesting happens? Oh, I know what we can do. The bug's just waiting for its introduction. It's trying to introduce itself. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. oh, oh, here we go. Wait, fuck my fish. bug execution, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks <laughs> as though JoJo is trying to oh, kill no. the roach. Oh, oh God. God, God, he fell. It's dead. Oh. oh. Super dead now. <laughs> Oh boy! So, ladies and gentlemen, in case you didn't know, <laughs> JoJo sprayed poison at the cockroach. It fell from the ceiling. As Jeremy stomped it to hell, I walked through a cloud of poison, and then Cannon got some secondhand poison as well. <laughs> Like walk right back, oh, like son of like a bitch. It, like Ray just didn't get <laughs> the best episode ever. We got the OG crew back. Bug attacks. Oh shit! Nine eleven was three days ago. I didn't get electrocuted this time. Uh, hey, there's still there's still time. Oh, let's wrap it up then. Fucking hey, I brought my taser. It's your, it's your birthday. Pat yeah. has switched completely different sides of the table. JoJo is standing horrified. Uh, tag team. We got this. Right, so, I, think, I think we're good. The roach is liquid. I obliterated that motherfucker. Like, I hope that... Uh, there's no way that stomp didn't get on the mic. So, we'll, we'll start over here and then go around. For the- <laughs> oh, God. Jeremy. Uh, oh, yeah. Where can the people find you on the internet? Uh, stomping bugs down the lane. Uh, uh, no, you can find me on Instagram at Toons Cosmic Reality. I'm also on uh, Letterboxd at Back Backwards Hero, and uh, coming up in this October, uh, now that I've got my streaming set up back up, I'll be on twitch.tv slash Backwards Hero doing Hollow Knight. Uh, I'm probably going to do Still Soul Run, and I'm probably going to cry. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. JoJo. All right. My name is JoJo. You can follow me on the tweeters at J-O-N-I-A-B-Y-24, and John Oates on 12 on Lillerbox. And you can find me at that cannon guy on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, Goodreads, and the TikTok, and very soon in the poison control offices because I got a big old <laughs> huff of that one, buddy. I, I, do I have antenna yet? Is no, uh, not oh yet. God, he's going Kafka. It has a re- reverse effect on, on humans. <laughs> oh, we're fuck. more alive, but more buggy. <laughs> That's men in black all over again. <laughs> I worked pest control. I breathe a lot of that shit in. I'm fine. You'll be fine. Jimmy, what is that? What is that you have right there? Your egg sacs it's hanging out. You stop looking at my egg sac. Has one of oh. your eyes always been that green? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pat. 
Uh, yes, hello, it's Pat. Uh, thank you all so much for listening to, to this birthday special. Uh, also, because it will never happen another one again. <laughs> Uh, but you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox at John Lost His Name. And if you would, please be so kind to go check out uh, this week's episode of All You Can Hear Podcast. It's episode 280, where we have our biggest taste test to date. We have over 30 chips, snacks, and drinks from all across Southeast Asia. It's a great time. Two plus hours, and alongside us trying these snacks is AY State's original Tanner. He comes back to help us out. It's a great time. Go check that out. Fun stuff. Uh, I'm Captain Chimmy. You can follow me at Captain Chimmy's Kind of Art, Captain Chimmy's Almost Music, Captain Chimmy's Toy Box. Uh, I've got another podcast that I do every so often whenever the moon strikes me called Captain Chimmy's Effed Up Head. You can listen to me slowly lose my mind. Great fun. You can also uh, that's find just me- a show. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at the comic strip here in Tuscaloosa if you want to buy some comics. I'm going to sell you some comics. It's, it's it's what I do. And, yeah. Thank you for listening. And we will see you next week for, uh, pretty sure it's Zandali. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next week we are watching Zandali with Nicolas Cage and Judge Reinhold. I That's like right. You need to do like this big like and hand motion when you say it. They both have mustaches. Zandily. Zandily. Yes, mustache. Jazz hands. Ooh. After that, we are coming back with the impression game. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a good time. And then for October, we have some stuff. We've got Into the Spider Verse. We're coming back uh, for another Uncaged episode uh, for Wild Wild West. Oh, that's going to be wow. a full house, folks. Oh, Don't you worry. Excited. Uh, after that, we're doing uh, The Wicker Man. Hopefully with our friend Eric, uh, who big fan of the show, ish. Uh, <laughs> she has to talk to the show all the time, but we love him. And then after that, we're going to do a scary movie spooktacular with another Twitter poll. You sons of bitches made us watch the Ginger Dead Man. Uh, so now let's see what else you'll do to us. Hey, y'all keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you next time. Happy birthday, Shimmy! Let's go kill us some bugs. <laughs>